Okay, folks, well, we've got the Bluegrass Music Festival on at Glebe Farm. And um, I've already been around there twice, and the blinking mic's not worked. But we're really looking forward to this. Bluegrass came over to um, the Appalachian Mountains in America around about the 1600s. It came from England, Scotland, and Ireland. It's got like this Celtic vibe to it, but that's pretty much lost now, but that's how it began. Um, it's kind of like blues, hillbilly, and Celtic, and gospel combined. And they have a, they have a gospel morning, actually, uh, but we obviously never see it because we're at church. But the, you can't come, Jess. You've got to stay here. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the, um, the setup. I've done a, a late upload this week because I wanted to get this, a little bit of this festival for you. Um, music. Music's so beautiful, isn't it? I love music. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She went back to the camper. Yeah, yeah. She'd gone all the way back. <laughs> What's her name? Jess. Jess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll just go through here a sec. What's the set up there? Looks lovely. Do you set up the sound then? Yeah. Yeah. How long does it take you? Sorry? How long does it take you to set all the sound up? Oh, uh, well, we, you know, off and on. We, we, we started yesterday. We did a bit this morning. We do it in between. We do all the things. I mean, yeah. You could do it in, a, in two or three hours, probably. But we had to build the stage as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, the you know these speak we're on about because I, I run a church a few miles from here. Those speak are they those Bose speakers are they? No, they're um, um, they're RCF. Okay. Evox. Oh, so you're controlling it all off. It's all digital mixer, is it? It is. Yeah. Wow. Um, Just what we've been looking at. This is for the church. Well, you can do it from an iPad. Yeah. So, uh, oh, that's brilliant. Fantastic, look at that folks, digital mixer. Oh, that sounds beautiful. And you're on electricity as well. Yeah, oh me. yeah, no. But for us, because we do a lot of, um, like on a Sunday night, we show a lot of films and documentaries and that in the church, so I wanted something that could, because it's vocals talking, it's completely different than singing, isn't it? Oh, and the way that. Yeah, the speakers yeah. handle it. I, I mean, um, singing in terms of choirs and things yeah. like that, choirs are very difficult. No, oh, I because you can't get close to each individual member. Yeah, that's I mean, right. At the moment, we're in bluegrass. You you have two two ways of doing it. You can yeah. do it with a single microphone. Yeah. Uh, where everybody gathers around and takes turns and, and moves yeah. back and yeah. forth. That's a very traditional way of doing it. Um, the way we're doing it today is we, we're trying to mic every single thing up individually mm. because yeah. we've got a lot of novices and people who've never done it before. You, you can turn them so down we, a bit. <laughs> we turn them down, turn them up, help them we'll out. turn them, them off bit. completely. Yeah, because it takes, it's quite a bit of technique with yeah. the, the single mic setup. Yes, um, of course. Brilliant. If you've never done it before, you know, it's a bit hard. So yeah. We, we, do it we, we always miss your... Because you have a gospel morning, don't you? That's right, yeah. Yeah, we, we miss it every year because I'm, I'm at church, you see. Well, gospel so. morning is usually, it'll either be single mic or fully acoustic. Yeah. That's quite strange because we've just, we're just looking at changing the sound system over and sorting things out um, to make it a bit better for live church. We're going to put a, a camera on the uh, table of the Lord as well, you see, with a mic. So we. We're just in the process of um, revamping it all. And um, I think we're going to be putting this service uh, live on RTN as well. That's the idea. So, nice people, aren't they? Nice people. 
Probably sick of me coming round here. This is the third time. I love the colour of that. Love that colour. Fantastic. And there's a caravan here with a log burner in the top of it. Look at this, I love log burners. Log burners are the coolest. Look at that, see that? Log burner. That's ace. I'm in search of some music. That's better, we've got some music at last. Beautiful. That's lovely. Beautiful. This is the first nice day. Oh yeah. First nice day we've had in probably a month. So, and it apparently according to talking to him earlier on, I'm not going across the field here because it's all been freshly ploughed. See how quick everything changes, folks. Look. So I've been walking through here for the last, what, three, four months um, with the barley. Now there's no path again, so we've got to retread the path all over again. There's literally no path going to that gate now. So we've got to do it all over again. It's all part of the changing of the seasons. So they'll be coming, they'll be going along here shortly with drills ploughs and drills, drilling in the sea for next year. It'll either be wheat or barley, probably. What a gorgeous day for you, eh? Isn't it lovely? Yeah. A nice van, I like the setup. <laughs> like your setup. Yeah, did you do it yourself? Yes, I built it about six, seven years ago. Lovely. You've done a great job. A bear van. Yeah. Uh, I've got a great pleasure from doing that. Oh, it's therapeutic, isn't it, doing yeah. up vans? Yeah. Yeah, we, had a, we did a transit very similar to this. And um, we've got an, an old classic Heimer across the road there now, which we, you know, is uh, great. But we took our transit all the way to the top of the Swiss Alps and everywhere, you know. Oh, right. Well, the furthest this has been is the Outer Hebrides, but... Uh... Oh, <laughs> where did you go? We went a barrow up the island chain. Yeah, the US. right the way to the top. Up to Stornoway. And yeah, cool. Stornoway, what a place. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it up there. <laughs> Love it. Oh, here they are. Here she is. We got to go. <laughs> oh, dear. Look at this, folks, now. Oh, this is our little sanctuary, our little garden. So we've used that to foil this and we've got like our own little garden now. Right. Right. Okay, folks. Do it chicken for our guests.
It was a nice, peaceful night last night. Actually, most of the musicians were done by nine o'clock. I went over to do some filming and they were all done by nine. They're a, a really lovely bunch, these guys, these bluegrass guys, really lovely people. And then I think about one o'clock in the morning, they started back up again, just doing some jamming. But it was really nice. Um, obviously, recently we've been looking at Jubilee and I've been trying to look a little bit at slavery, past, present and also future. So we've been looking at the transatlantic slave trade, we've been looking at trafficking, human trafficking, trafficking of children, unspeakable things that we, we see and hear today. And the very least, the very least that it should do for any discerning Christian is make you appreciate how blessed you are to live the life that you live to live a life of freedom and to live a life where we have all of the basics met. That should be the absolute minimal thing that looking at slavery should do is it give us the opportunity to say, thank you so much, Lord, for our freedom. And if it doesn't do that, and if we can't see that, there's something wrong, folks, there really is. But I think most, most Christians can see you know that um, we are so, so blessed to live the life that we live. But we want, as a church, to be able to have some kind of an input in helping people out. And so we're looking at the moment for some kind of Christian organisation in which we can help in terms of trafficking and things like that. Now, just to let you know, we've got Nick Cohen. I'm really looking forward to Nick coming. Uh, he's coming this Sunday morning. He's doing his a third teaching on creation. We're going to have Nick over because we're going to have a special weekend around the Feast of Tabernacles. I'll let you know more about it. But we're going to have a few speakers coming to the church from Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And Nick's going to be one of them. Um, we're going to look at the theme of the in-gathering from many different aspects. Because obviously Tabernacles means in-gathering, in-gathering of the last harvest. Um, but Nick's coming this Sunday, really looking forward to him. I think he's going to be looking this Sunday on the importance of, of actually grasping that there was a literal Adam and Eve of which all races go back to. And if we could just grasp that one little thing, half of the problems in terms of racial problems that we see today would be gone in an instant. Paul tells us in Acts 17, is it Acts 17, where he says, Every, all of the nations come from one blood. You know, incredible. So, uh, we've got Nick coming this Sunday. Um, Bruce sent me a video um, after Sunday morning's message, which we were looking at the transatlantic slavery. He sent me a video and I don't know, I think we've probably watched this video about 10 times already of a choir in Stellenbosch, which we were, actually went through Stellenbosch because one of Bruce and Ingrid's uh, sons lives in Stellenbosch or lived in Stellenbosch. And it's a choir in Stellenbosch and you'll see for yourself that it's made up of black people and white people and the song is called Jerusalem. So I wanted to save the very best for this video till the last. I really hope that this video, uh, this, this, this song, sets your eyes above all this stuff that we see going on on this planet and sets your eyes to another realm, to when Jesus will come back, to when the Jubilee trumpet will indeed be sounded, when all the nations will stream up to Jerusalem to worship God together. So have a look at this in closing, friends, and God bless you. And thank you so much for all of your support and uh, all of your encouragement over these last three years since the beginning of COVID. It's been and continues to be a massive adventure. And I feel like we're just beginning to realize that we have all of us, we have a part to play in the times that are coming in. And it's not all bad news. 
God is doing his thing. Where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. Let's keep our eyes on what's to come, friends. Jesus said, when you see all these things begin to happen, look up because your redemption draws nigh. God bless.